Hi everyone, it's Jenny from the Bridgewater Public Library. This week I'm going to show you how to make a string of cranes. So hopefully you watched my video two weeks ago about how to fold a paper crane. Um, if not, I've linked to it in the description below so you can quickly access it. Um, and I mentioned in that video that um, if you're folding a regular size paper crane at home, if you have regular size origami paper, um, I often like to fold a smaller size crane for when I'm making a string of cranes. So you can just take your regular piece of paper, fold it in half, cut it, and then fold it in half again and cut it so that you end up with um, one fourth of it to make a smaller crane. Um, making a smaller crane might be a little bit trickier, but just keep with it um, and you will succeed in no time. So I'm going to cut to show the table so I can show you the uh, materials that you'll need for today. Um, and then we can get started. Okay, so on my table today, I've got six paper cranes that I folded. Um, and then I've got this string. Uh, this is a quilting thread, I believe. Um, really any kind of thread that you have will work. If it's super thin, you might wanna double it up just to have a little bit more um, robustness there, um, but really any kind of thread or string will work. Um, I have a needle. This is a book binding needle, um, but a sewing needle uh, or an embroidery needle will work just fine. I've got this cute little hook. I think I bought these at Michael's a couple of years ago um, to put on the very top of the string to hang it. Um, if you don't have something like that or you don't want that, you can just tie a little loop at the top. Um, and then I've got um, some examples here. I often like to put a little charm at the end of the string to give it a little weight um, and also just so I have uh, something to start with. Um, I'm going to use this shell bead that I found today, um, but buttons work really well. Um, and if you don't have anything like that, you can also just use a knot at the end of the string. All right, let's get started. All right, so you're going to want to take about an arm's length of string. It's really a guesstimate here. Um, depends on how many cranes you have um, and how long you want your string to be. I like to make some space in between each crane. That's also pretty much a guesstimate. Um, if you are attaching a bead or a button at the end, uh, you can go ahead and use that to create the, the knot at the end of your string. If you aren't using a button, I'll show you a simple way to create a knot, which is to place the string beneath the needle on your finger, wrap the string around the needle a couple of times, grab onto it and pull it through, all the way through to the end to form a little knot. All right, I'm going to start with my button, uh, not button, my shell bead. Uh, bringing my thread through it again. And then I'm going to hook under the stitch I just made on the button to just create a little knot there. I forgot to mention that when you thread your needle, what I usually do is just leave it so it's enough to hold on to. Um, it's a little tricky. Uh, it's an embroidery style way of, of doing stitching. Um, you get used to holding on to it though. Okay, so now we're going to take our first crane. And if you notice in the bottom of your crane, you've got this teeny tiny little hole. So you're going to go ahead and place your needle right into that hole. And then you'll feel the needle coming up through the top. You'll pull it through 
and pull your crane all the way down to whatever the bottom of your string or thread is. I usually hold it there pretty tightly, keeping the wings closed. And then create a little stitch by going back through in this little head enclosure pocket. And then pulling to create a stitch. You don't want to pull too hard. Keep in mind that this is paper and it will tear. So now I have my first crane attached. Going to pick up my second crane. Again, find the hole on the bottom, place my needle through it. Feel that the needle is coming right through the top. and then pull the crane down. Now this is where you're going to want to assess how much distance you're keeping between the cranes. Do you want there to be a lot, a little? Do you want to measure it? I usually just give an estimate of about two inches and then come with my needle while holding the crane on the string where I want the space to be, how much space I want there to be on the string, hold it, and then come with my needle into this little area, back up through until it's tight. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the next crane. Find the hole on the bottom. Come up. And through, bring your crane down on your string. Assess your distance, looks about even. Hold the crane on the string as you insert your needle back through the top to create a stitch. It's got stuck on the other crane. All right, got three done. Take the fourth again. Insert through your little hole. Feel that the needle's going directly through the top. Pull your thread, your thread, your thread, your string through, thread through. Look at how much distance there is. Looks pretty good. Hold the crane against the string as you insert again through the top. Crane number five. Come through the top. And the last crane, find the hole on the bottom. Feel that your needle is going directly through the top. Pull through. Assess how much space is in between the cranes. 
hold the crane against the thread, open up its little head pocket, create a stitch, All right, so we've got all of our cranes on our string with a little accent at the end. Now, I am going to attach my little hook. Again, if you don't have something like this, um, you could use something like a, a safety pin, um, uh, and I, or you could just go ahead and tie off a knot at the top um, the cranes will stay in the position that they're in because they're all stitched on. Um, so however you want to create something at the top uh, is fine. I usually just put these on because they're because they're nice. They weren't very expensive. I think I found them in the jewelry department at Michael's. And once I have it on, I usually just tie a regular knot to hold it in place. All right. And there we have it. All right, I just wanted to show real quick the finished product. Here it is. Hope you had fun. These are a great thing to give um, as a nice little handmade gift for really any sort of holiday um, or like a baby's nursery or something. So have fun creating, guys.